Welcome back, fam. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to discuss whether local law enforcement should employ the use of geofence warrants as well as reverse search warrants. So before we begin, be sure to hit that like button, and if you have not already, go ahead and subscribe. Okay, it should go without saying that I'm not a lawyer, and I don't play one on TV, right? I don't give legal advice for anything, but I do care about my people. So what's a geofence warrant, and what's a keyword search warrant? Now, going forward, you have to already understand that your internet providers, your telco providers, your phone companies, anyone that's basically trafficking your internet or trafficking your data, they've been using it to not only sell you things, they're also using it to actually find and locate criminals. So before we go into the specifics and the generalities of what the geofence warrant and the keyword search warrant are, Let's take a step back and let's understand what the warrants that have been used in the past are. You know, there, there's multiple kinds of warrants, you know, arrest warrants, uh, search warrants, bench warrants, fugitive warrants. There's all kinds of warrants that, that require a kind of approval. And then there's the kind that don't require a kind of approval. So diving in, what's a warrant? A warrant is the legal authorization to violate your rights with protections from the damages incurred and you know going forward in this video in this discussion I'm gonna save myself some time I'm gonna save you some time rather than refer to law enforcement as police officers or even law enforcement I'm just gonna use the catch-all phrase of cops right I think that's easier I think we all know what cops are so moving on so cops make arrests right cops make arrests and sometimes they need a warrant to make the arrest and then other times they don't. So a cop doesn't necessarily need a warrant to arrest somebody if they are aware that a felony has been committed or a misdemeanor in view of the cop. If they see the crime that's in progress. Now, in some cases, they don't have that authority to just randomly arrest people. In such cases, they would have to go and get an arrest warrant. An arrest warrant is when a judge authorizes the arrest and detention of an individual or the search and seizure of an individual's property. This hinges on whether probable cause is, is available, if it's necessary. Probable cause would be the evidence or the theory of a crime. And in order for the arrest warrant to be valid, there has to be a specific person that's listed. There has to be specifics involved. So a cop can go to a judge and be like, hey, man, I think there's a crime over here. I think a crime had happened and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And the judge will be like, hey, man, I think you're right. You know, <laughs> go get him. You know, signs off on it. And then next thing you know, he's knocking at the guy's door. It's not really a conviction just yet. A person has just been arrested. Now that we understand what a cop can do with and without a warrant, what's a search warrant? A search warrant is an order that a judge authorizes a cop to conduct a search of a person, location, or vehicle for evidence of a crime to confiscate any evidence they find. So essentially, the cop would have to present the judge with probable cause. He would have to identify reasonably and specifically what items he's looking for, where, and in some cases, when. Now, he can come up with probable cause to act for this thing, either by direct observation of possible evidence or, you know, just by hearsay. You know, someone saw something, maybe an informant's dropping dimes on folks. That's how he can come up with probable cause, you know, to go and request a search warrant. So when folks start showing up at folks' doors, uh, it's not by coincidence. Actually, there's quite a few exceptions to the rules here. There's ways to get around a search warrant. There's the consent. You just pull up on somebody, hey man, can I take a look over here? You know, there's the plain view. The cop actually sees the crime or they see the evidence. Then, then there's the plain feel, right? That's when the cop is a... <laughs> Yeah, that's that that's that whole stop and frisk thing uh, you think the cops just filling you up and he's really just looking for evidence of a crime you know something that would indicate a crime 
has happened or could have happened here. These are just a few of the warrantless searches, right? They don't need to go and get a warrant for these things, right? They, the policing powers allow this. So what do we established so far, right? In order for police to get a warrant, they have to do some form of investigation, right? They have to hit the streets, gather evidence, you know, interview some folks, maybe do a stakeout with some takeout, who knows? But the fact of the matter is, the police have to gather evidence before they go ahead and request a warrant, right? They have to uh, do some, some kind of information gathering. They have to accumulate data. You know, just to sidestep for a bit, here in Chicago, there's this uh, snitches get stitches policy. As well as in other uh, high crime cities, it's for some reason frowned upon for a person to give up information as to a crime that they have witnessed or a crime that they know of for fear of retaliation. And it's because of these things that police have to uh, start employing uh, new and more creative tactics to conduct their investigations, right? If no one's saying anything, you have to, you, you, gotta, you gotta get data from somewhere. You have to gather evidence in some sense. And in cases like this, I sympathize. And if you're a parent, you got a bunch of kids. What do you do when all your kids seem to not know a dang thing about a problem that just happened, right? Like for instance, right? You got this nice lamp, right? You got a nice lamp, you just bought it. Hell, it may have been a, a, a heirloom, right? Could have been your grandma's lamp. And you got like three kids, right? Nice lamp. One day you come home, the damn lamp is broken, right? Shattered on the floor. All three kids were home. All your kids were home. But somehow, no one knows anything. Don't nobody know nothing. Everybody's, I don't know, I don't know, hmm? I don't know. You know, don't nobody know nothing. So, are you gonna punish all your kids? Or are, are you gonna, you know, investigate, right? And that's the same idea that we're gonna keep in the forefront of our minds here. Are we going to investigate everyone? Or are we gonna punish everyone? Are we going to look for the actual criminal? or the, the culprit of the broken lamp? Or are we going to assume that everyone is the criminal? So with that in mind, let's move on to what the geofence warrant is and what the keyword search warrant is. So the geofence warrant, also known as the reverse location warrant, is when a judge subpoenas device uh, location data that's already being harvested from a certain place at a certain time. So a judge would uh, basically request X amount of information be handed over from your, your internet provider or your phone. Uh, in the past, it's been phone calls all within a certain range, right? It can be within a certain range of a specific modem, uh, a certain range of a specific building, you know, who knows the actual dimensions, but it's specific to the warrant and they have to be specific. Like I said, when they request these warrants, they just can't be vague, right? It can be a school, an apartment building, who knows, right? But let's assume for a second that it's a neighborhood, right? Let's assume for a second that a crime was committed in this building right here, right? There's a crime that's been committed here. Cops, uh, for some reason, don't want to do the investigation. They immediately jump to the geofence warrant, right? They go on su subpoena Verizon and Teen Mobile. They say, we want to know what the hell's going on here at this time in the past, right? And then they hand over all this information, right? Everything within this area here suddenly became a suspect in a crime when the actual criminal could have been just over there. So the cops now have access to all of this information, right? They, they can pour through all this information in hopes of finding the, the specific guy. Now, if, if you can remember just a few moments ago, I told you that there's a, there's a kind of search called a plain view search. If the data that was provided to the cops isn't specific to the crime, but now they see that other crimes have taken place according to this data, that can lead to other issues, right? That can lead to uh, search warrants. That could lead to arrest warrants. You know, like some people just don't show up to court for some reason. There's a bench warrant for them and the cops now just found the guy, right? That's an invasion of privacy, some would say. Hell, there could be fugitives in the area. They had a warrant, telco company turned over that data and suddenly they just... So there's some pros 
and cons to this, but what happens when your data is abused? What happens if the information is used against you? What if? So let's move on to the keyword search, right? Keyword search uh, warrant is even more less specific to an actual area. It's solely reliant on data, right? It's solely reliant on what you searched for within a certain amount of time that has to do with a specific crime that happened. If we take a step back, like I said, I'm in Chicago, and let's look at what the actual qualifications for a cop is. What is the actual qualifications? Because this will help us further understand how detrimental these, these new warrants can affect someone. So in order to apply to be a cop in Chicago, you gotta be, well, at least 21 years old, but not over 40, a citizen with at least 60 credit hours. Now, let's assume for a moment that 18 years old, you know, you just graduate out of high school, you go to college, four years, you know, 18, that, that, puts, you at, <laughs> that puts you at 22, you come out with a four-year degree, and now you want to be a cop. And if you're going to be a cop in Chicago, odds are, if you live in Hyde Park, they're going to put you in Tinley Park, right? They don't want you being a cop in your own area for some reason. If you think back to what Michael J. White said, he said that when he tried to be a cop, he aced the test, but he didn't get the job. He didn't get the job because they told him the police don't like smart people. They don't want intelligent people on the force, right? Why? because intelligent people make critical thinking uh, a reality. So you got a 21 year old cop policing an area he's unfamiliar with. What do you think the outcome's gonna be, right? It's always gonna be him on his heels, right? It's always gonna be him trying to understand something or may not even give it a damn. In theory, we have a 22 year old cop uh, with a degree, no real world experience, but he's supposed to be able to sort through data sort through charts, graphs, as well as uh, multiple documents. He's supposed to go through all this stuff and find a criminal. That just doesn't happen. Let's say you look up a fancy set of rims, right? You go to buy these rims, right? The guy doesn't have the rims, right? He, he doesn't have the rims because they were just stolen. Somebody just robbed the guy you were gonna buy the rims from. You didn't commit the crime, but a couple of weeks later, you're being pulled in as a suspect for the crime. You're being pulled in as a suspect for a crime you didn't commit simply because you looked up the rims that you wanted to buy. The keywords that you used in your web search, whether it was on your phone, whether it was on your desktop, that just made you a suspect. Do you see how dangerous this thing is? And with the minimal amount of care that some would say cops take to an investigation, that you could see how this could become a problem especially when you take into account the number of exonerations that have taken place uh, since 1989. Like, we're all smart, we're all adults. We can all safely assume that uh, since 1989, uh, policing has become more intelligent, more potent. But at the same time, there's always going to be someone who just slips through the cracks, someone who, who just got messed over, or even someone misidentified. And if we look at neildavislaw.com, okay, we can see the amount of wrongful convictions state by state and the type of offense since uh, 1989. Now, just for kicks, we're gonna go with Illinois, seeing as how I live in Chicago. And since 1989, we have 303 exonerations. It seems like a low number until you, know, you put yourself in that. What if one of these people was a family member? You know, what if one of these people are your sons or your daughters? Hell, even your father or your mother. What if? Right? Are you willing to take that chance? Are you willing to trust local law enforcement with, you know, a questionable track record? Right? Are, are you willing to go to bat for a system that would deem everyone a suspect in hopes of finding the actual criminal? Like, who would take that bet? Who would gamble on something like that? Now, it's not just the cops that can, you know, lead to a misidentification of a criminal, right? It's not just, you know, mistaken identity, right? When you're pulled into a lineup, someone else is trying to identify whether you are or are not the criminal. So, you know, just remember that, right? And also assume that 
It's not just the law enforcement that you have to worry about here. It's the actual prosecutors that omit information from cases, right? If we go to Front Page Confidential, they have an article dated September 23rd, 2020, uh, titled Federal Prosecutors Guilty of Widespread Misconduct and White Collar Exonerations. Right? This is white collar exonerations, man. This is, you know, uh, embezzlement or, you know, people just ain't paying their taxes, right? This is that sort of thing. And if we scroll down a bit, uh, it says that uh, in federal cases, prosecutors commit misconduct much more often than police. 52% to 22%, right? So these people have control of the flow of how your case is going to go, right? If we read even further, the gap widens in federal white collar exonerations. Federal prosecutors committed misconduct seven times as often as the police. In 65% of such cases, as opposed to 9% for the cops. See, now you can see that these new sort these new kinds of warrants, how how destructive they can be. To, to not only a community, but to a family, man. To a young person who's got a future, right? A young person who's got a future uh, suddenly is a suspect. Suddenly can be convicted of a crime he did not commit. It could be that one person out of a thousand. That one person out of ten thousand. Life destroyed. All because all of this information was harvested. God forbid... Uh, artificial intelligence should be the determining factor whether this is the criminal or not whether this person is guilty or not god forbid that that should be the case this person's life is destroyed simply because all of his information was used against him with a minimal amount of policing a minimal amount of investigatory skills and he was prosecuted by a cop. No, he was prosecuted by someone who just wanted that extra notch on their belt. Wanted to say that, you know, I put this guy away. Or maybe, you know, someone that has some sort of bias, right? So who do we have to blame for this, right? Do we blame law enforcement? Do we blame politics? Do we blame uh, our leadership? Do we blame the news? Who? Right? That's a good question. You should ask yourself that. Ooh. Now I'm going to answer the question. You should really be looking at the Pookies, Ray Rays, Peaches, and Nay Nays, right? Hey, look at these guys because these folks, these kinds of people, they record themselves committing crimes, right? They record themselves committing crimes and then act dumbfounded when they're arrested. It, 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 it's simply amazing to watch, right? The PPP loans... Uh, you had guys buying Ferraris, you had guys all with cash and stuff, and for some reason, their, their own line flaunted it for clout, and it ultimately got them pinched, man. Like, imagine that, right? You got people, you got folks out here willing to display a crime in progress and think that there's, n that, how would they get caught, right? These are the people that validate these geofence warrants, these reverse search warrants, right? They make them a reality and a necessity, okay? These are the new warrants. These are the possibilities of how they could affect us all. Lives could be wrong. So, my question to you. Should local law enforcement, should police use these new warrants? Should they use geofence warrants and keyword search warrants knowing what we know now and what the possible ramifications could be be sure to hit that like button on the way out subscribe and be sure to leave a comment below peace